What is going on guys and welcome back to part 2 of the turning this photography website that we designed in Figma into a Webflow website, a working website. This video should be easy enough to follow along if you've never touched Webflow, but if you are an absolute beginner when it comes to websites and CSS and how things generally work, then maybe watch some tutorials first. It might make you understand things a little bit better. Let's create a blank site in Webflow and we are going to call it Photography Portfolio. Okay, so we have our blank site here and we have our Figma site here. We are going to select this. Let's take this here, which is our background color. And here on the body, we are going to make sure that we are on body, all pages. That means it's going to apply it to every page. And we don't need to create a class for it. We're going to click in here, paste, bang. Just like that, we're almost done. We have this green effect. Now, what we can do here, we can add an image. We can choose the image. This is just a free noise texture. Drag that into there. Now this is going to overlay on top of our background. So what we want to have <laughs> is that it is tiled and it is 2x. That's going to make it a little smaller, a little sharper, and we can adjust the size of it here. And we probably want it to be a little bit smaller still. We're going to come out of that and what we're actually going to do as well is add a background color on top of this. We're going to add our color here, our original, and we are just going to tone it back like so. Now basically what this is doing is we have our image here which we can't quite adjust the opacity of and then we have our background color sitting on top but then the default background color is that anyway which leaves us with this so now let's create our header so we have this section here we are going to grab a div and we're going to call this header and so what do we have in this header we have a logo which is here we have a navigation which is here and then we have a button which is here so we have three elements that we need to add div and we're going to call this, oh, actually, we're going to call this logo. And we are going to right click on that and we're going to convert that to a link. And then we are also going to grab an image and drag that in there. And this is going to be called logo image. Go into Figma. Here we have our image here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to export this. But I'm going to export this at 2x which is going to make it twice as big. And we are going to just make a folder here called images. Logo times two. We're going to drag this in here and we are going to select this, which is going to make it the original size. If it's a times two image, we can go back into Figma and we see we've got this padding around the logo, which we can have a look here. This is the, this is the hex code for that. So in this logo div here, we are going to add this background of that. Let's add a width and a height to this. So let's say we want it to be 60 pixels <clears throat> by 60 pixels. And we are going to turn this into a flex box. And we are going to position the insides centered and centered. And what we're actually going to do, we're going to make this a little bit bigger. So we are going to go... 100 by 100. No, let's do 90 by 90. 90 by 90 is what we have. We can go into the link part of this and we can change this to home. So that's going to take us back to the home page, which is what we're on right now. Great. So we have our first element. Now we are going to add in our navigation. There's a few ways to do this. We have a very simple navigation here. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to add in two separate links. Let's create a div. It's good to have divs. It helps keep things organized. So navigate, we'll call this nav container. And we want to make sure that that is inside the header. We are going to give this a width of just say 20%, a height of 90 pixels 
And in this header, what we are going to do is we're going to change this to flex. So now our nav container is sitting right here, which is what we want a text link. And we are going to call this nav link. Now, as we can see, the font here is enter. And what you might find is that enter isn't available on Webflow. Well, it actually is. So we can go into add fonts and we can select it from here because it's actually a Google font. So where are you? Enter. Not in there. Enter. Now let's have a look at what we've actually used from enter. So we've got enter bold, enter regular, bold, bold and regular is all we actually need. So we are going to go with 700. Now, do we have any other fonts to add just whilst we're here? We actually do. We have syncopate, bold, and just bold, I believe. As you can see, it is also a Google font. So we're going to add bold and that's all we need. Now those fonts are added. We are going to go back to the designer. Now we can change this to enter because it's available here. And what we're going to do at the same time is we're going to go to the body, make sure we've got the body selected and we are going to change this to enter as well. Now we don't need to have it selected here because it is actually using it from the body, which is the higher class. And let's just copy and paste another one of these and we're going to change this to bio. Now let's style these a little bit. So let's give them, let's give this a flex. Let's position it in the middle, which is what we want. And let's position it in the middle of that. Now, if we go back to the nav link, we are turning it to white. So we change that there. We do not want the underline, so we'll turn that off. And we want this to be bold. And we also want this to be 12 pixels. So what we can do, what we're going to do here, we're going to go back to the body. We're going to change this to, eh, you know what? It looks better at 14. So we're actually going to choose 14. So we're going to keep this at 14 and we're going to change this to one EM, which is actually going to pull the size from our body. Now let's add some padding to these. We are going to just add about 20 padding. That's going to give them the separation that we want. And you can see that these are still perfectly centered in the middle. Now, what we want to do is we want to add our button. And for our button, we are actually going to add a link block because that's going to work very similar to our logo. And inside that we are going to add a text block. So let's change this to header button and we'll change this to button text. We got select this. We got our ready pink, this color here. We're going to grab that and we are going to apply the background to header button. We're going to give it that color. Perfect. And then we're going to go to the button text. We're going to change the text to say higher header button. We are going to change the width to 90, the height to 90. We're going to make it a flex and we're going to center that in the middle. Now we're going to go to the button and we're going to change that to bold, turn that off and we can keep all this the same, 1 EM, it's the same as the navigation, and we just need to turn this to white and make sure that's up. This has an underline because if we go here and we go into all links, all links has this underline. We can just turn that off and that's going to turn it off there. So there is our navigation. That's looking pretty good, except we want to space these out like so now because this is 90 pixels and this is 90 pixels and this is a fixed width 
and these are positioned center, we can actually just position it like that. So that works great because we have the space between, which is evenly going to position it like that. And it's also going to be responsive. That's always going to be in the middle. Magic. There is our header. And the last thing we are going to do is we're going to change the position from static to sticky. And if we go to the top here and we just type zero, that is going to make sure that that is always positioned at the top. Now on here, we actually don't have the navigation sticky. Uh, we will come back to that later. We're going to select everything in this frame and hide it. apart from this squiggle. So now we've got the squiggle, which we are going to want to overlay on the background. So we are going to export this as an SVG. We're going to call it hero scribble. Let's add a div underneath the main header and let's call this hero. Now we want this to be 100 viewport width and 100 viewport height. We want to give that a background with our scribble in it. So there we have it. And we are going to change this to cover heading. Let's have this as H1. It comes with some default setting, but let's change this H1. If we go up here and click all H1 headings. So let's change this to three EM, which is going to be roughly the same size, but it's going to be relative to our um, body font size. Now let's also change the font of this to this syncopate bold and let's change it here to freelance. Let's duplicate this. And so here we have two H ones, all H ones. We are going to actually increase in size till it's quite a lot bigger. So let's change it to about that. Now we also want to change this to we're on all H1 headings. We can actually get rid of the padding, which is just the default padding. And on this top one, we are going to add a class of outline. Now for this text stroke effect, unfortunately it is not easily done in Webflow unless you have a paid site plan already where you can add some custom code. So we are just going to leave this for now. We will come back to it and change it properly, but we are just going to leave this without a stroke just for now. And this here, we can change this to accent and let's give this, this color here. And whilst we're at it, we'll go into this color and we will add that just so it is always there. And in here we will change it to that red color. We have our hero here. And what we're going to do is we are going to do minus 90 pixels on the margin of our hero section, because we know that our header is 90 pixels tall. We're going to add a div here and we're just going to call this hero text and we'll move our text inside that. Now with our hero, let's change this to flex. And let's move it so everything is positioned in the center. Let's change the overflow to hidden. That means it's not going to um, have any horizontal scrolling on it. Now we have our images to add. So let's just save these out here. We actually want to turn off the drop shadow as we're saving them out. Um, and we can add that in CSS. This way we can save out as a JPEG and save on size. Now we want to make sure these are actually straight so we can select all of them. And in here we can just type zero. Now they're straight. So let's take these and save them all out. So we're going to add an image to our hero. Choose image. There it is there. We're going to call this hero image and we are going to copy and paste that three times. Now let's go into here. Let's create a div that is going to hold all of our images hero image container. And then we're going to drag these inside. And, and so now you can't see it, but these are all contained within this div. 
Now let's make these centered. For our images, we need to make sure that they are positioned absolute. There we go. That's what we were trying to do. We're going to bring in the right and left margin of these. Now this is going to stack these on top like so. And then we can also rotate these. So let's just rotate them 20 degrees. Now we can have our hero image container. We can set a Z index to it. So we can set this to two. And here on our photography accent, we can set a Z index for this. If we set it to relative, then we can set this to five. And that's going to sit in front. Last two things to add to the header section is we're going to add a div and we're going to call this gradient and we are going to make sure this is positioned absolute and it is going to fill the entire screen. Now, if we go down to images and gradient, let's go here. Let's add a radial gradient. Now we don't want to add anything for this one, but we do want to add red. Now we can adjust the size of this just here, like so. Now we want this to be around that. And we actually want our images to be a bit bigger. So let's just make them bigger here. Oh, and the last thing for each image, we also want to add a box shadow. Now we can just eyeball this, give it, we'll give it no distance, but we will give it a good bit of blur and a good bit of size. The last thing we need to add is the scroll to explore. Let's just give it the, the class of scroll and Let's make it position absolute. We'll make sure it is sitting in our hero and we will make sure it's sitting 10 pixels from the bottom, 20 pixels. What color are we making that? Liam Neeson, which is just here. And let's also save that to our swatches. Let's make this four. Now let's quickly change these images because I don't like how they have that white border. I managed to figure out what the problem was. For some reason, these th three frames had point pixel percentages and that was adding a tiny amount of border for some reason when I was exporting them. But I've changed that. So we're now working correctly in this top section. Top section, as I'm sure you'll be glad to know, is finally complete. Now let's go on to the second section which is much easier. It's our three column grid of these campaigns slash case studies. Now this is a really easy section to do. Let's go into Webflow. Let's add a div block. Let's make sure it's at the very bottom. Let's call this section campaigns. Now let's give this a width of a hundred viewport width, a height of a hundred viewport height. Now let's add a grid. There's a few different ways to do this. You could do this with Flexbox. You could do this with adding three columns of Flexbox, but we're going to do this with the grid because the grid's actually amazing. To begin with, it can be a little scary. We're going to change the columns and rows to zero. We deleted a row there and we're going to add another column. Now let's rename this to campaign grid. Make sure that the height of this is 100% and a hundred percent and that's going to make it a hundred percent of this campaigns which was a hundred viewport a hundred viewport so now we have our three columns here you can't see them because there's nothing in them but that's what we're about to add right now so let's add a div block to this first section and we're going to call this campaign now what do we have inside that so we have an image and then we have these two bits of text and then we have this gradient too. Let's hide the campaign text and the gradient. 
let's select that and then let's export that image. We'll call this campaign one and we'll do the same for the others here. So now we have our three images and we will just drop these into here, an image. Let's choose the image. Campaign one. And what we want to do to that is let's say a hundred percent and a hundred percent. And we'll change that to cover. And we will rename this to campaign image. So actually, sorry, we are going to change the height to a hundred report height. Now that way that is going to sit flush right there. Add a div block within this and we are going to call this campaign text. This is syncopate font and then this is our enter. So let's add a header to make it a H2 and we'll call this campaign title. Now we want to make sure this is set to our syncopate and 1.2 em might be good the color white now we want this text to overlay on top of the image itself so what we can do is we can make this absolute to our campaign text and we can make sure it's positioned at the bottom for that to work we need to have a height as well so let's give it a height of 100 pixels and we also this is very important too this is why it's not working we need to give our campaign a position of relative so it knows how to sit so it knows to sit within that so campaign here we can now go to the bottom and that's going to add that there genius let's add some padding to that too so let's add 30 we actually don't need the height of that and we'll also give us a hundred, hundred percent. And then underneath this, let's copy and paste this, but we are going to change this one to a H3. And we are going to duplicate this class, but we are going to rename it. View campaign. And we're going to change this to 10. Actually, we're going to change that to zero. And we are going to change this to enter. We're going to change it to 1 EM. And let's also change that to our red. Let's maybe take away the padding on the bottom of that. Let's get rid of the height on this. We could change that to auto. And there we have it sitting at the bottom. And last final touch, let's add in our gradient. So campaign gradient, and we will make this position absolute and we will make sure that this is fully covering that and we will go into images gradient here we will change this to clear and we will invert that so it's the other way so bang bang there we go now we have our gradient and we just need to make sure that our text is positioned on top using Z index. So let's just give that a two and let's give this a one. And let's give this a bit more padding as well. Let's give it more padding on the sides. So let's give it 60. Now the beauty of grids is we can just copy that and then paste it, paste it again. And just like magic, it's pretty much done. So we can change our image of this one. Campaign image two. Campaign image three. Let's just change the title of these. Puma Elite Enchanted Forest. And that's that entire section done, apart from the cool animations that we are going to add to it. What you might see is this is now tucking behind that which to be honest looks quite cool, but that's not necessarily what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our header, which is all the way up here. 
it's sticky but remember it was the first thing we designed and we're going to give it a z index of 100 that way it's just going to sit on top of everything next section we have this explore works so very easy section to do we're going to add a new div we've got to make sure it's not contained within anything we want it to sit underneath this and we're going to call this categories now let's have a look what's in here we have this title and then we have this so it's a fairly straightforward section again height 100 viewport height width 100 viewport width we don't necessarily have to do that but we'll just add it in we will take this hero text and we will paste that in categories now let's rename it to explore works so now we have this hero text let's actually duplicate this and we're going to rename it now we don't want to just rename it because it's going to rename it up here too and we don't want to actually change this we want to duplicate this but use what we've already set so far so let's change this to category header text now let's duplicate this and we'll call this header top and we'll duplicate this and we'll call this accent bottom now as you can see in here this sits slightly crossing over and we want to do that by adjusting this margin here and give it a negative margin so we will just give it a negative margin there like that and we can just play with it here and um, what we might be able to do is go there right align that and then we'll make sure that this one's left aligned and then here because we have it inside a div we can then set a width to it so we can say 60 percent or so and then if we go up here click this it's going to center that so now it works like that let's add a little bit of padding onto a little bit of margin there as well Let's add a little bit more. Let's do it in um, viewport height as well. So let's say 10 viewport height. Now let's have a think about how we're going to do this section here. We'll hide this for now. How are we going to add a list like this? Now for this section, let's use Flexbot. So let's call this a category list. Let's make it with, let's say 70% height auto and we'll make sure it's positioned in the center now let's add another div within that and we'll call this category link and then within that we have editorial and that piece of text so let's add in a heading let's make this a h2 and let's call this well let's write editorial and then we'll give this category title and here we might want to delete that let's just set this to zero for now and let's change the font to that and what's the color of the font what do we want we actually want this which is our gray which we have here now we also need to add this number here so let's copy that and just paste that in again and we will rename this we will duplicate this and we will call it category number now we need both of these to sit beside each other so we are going to change this to flexbox and make sure it's set to horizontal and we're going to do it like this now it's going to push it to the side and we will just call this 06 so now we have our category link which looks like that now let's give it a little bit of padding let's give it 40 padding let's give it a stroke on the bottom and let's make that our red now let's duplicate this down a few times so what and we'll just change the text portraits environments experimental and let's just change the numbers on these okay and we are actually going to change the width of this slightly let's just make it let's change the max width to 800 pixels 
and we'll change the width of this to auto. And we'll actually change that a little bit more. And let's create a margin on top here. So let's just say five viewport height. And what we actually need to do is we need to convert each of these to a link block because we want these to be a link. But there we go, category link, category link, category link. Now, as you can see, these are now links, but they don't link anywhere. We will link up everything and add cool animations to all of it, including this cool, um, this cool hover display effect that we're gonna do. So this section technically right now is done. And we will move on to the last section, which is this bottom footer section. So let's add a new div. Divs are the building blocks of your website, if you haven't noticed already. So footer, and what we're gonna do? Height, 100 viewport height. Width, 100% or viewport width, doesn't really matter. And here's our last section. Oh, actually, I think we actually have a different background color for this section. As you can see on here, it's slightly different. So, which I believe we've used before, but we will reuse. So if we go into our category section, then we want to change our background to that. So as you can see, we have a spacing issue here underneath. And that is why, because we have added margin to that when we actually should have not done that if we take that off of there then we should actually add that to here we can add some padding to that and that's better and it looks like we might still have we will take that off so there we go it's going to be the exact same in this section that's easy so let's duplicate this down and let's call this let's shoot and to give us more control let's duplicate this class we will call it footer header text and let's adjust the width of it as well Something like that, it's gonna look cool. In this section, we added 10 viewport height. Let's do the same for this. Let's make sure we're on footer, 10 viewport height. Now, what do we have? We have these two boxes and then this image. So let's add these two boxes in. Now, if you hold control G in the Figma file, you can see our grid. Now you can see that this is a little more than 50%. This is around 70, 65% maybe, and then 35% with this. So. We're going to use that information to define these boxes that we're going to make. Add a div, work with me. We're going to add another div. I'm going to call this socials. Add another div, which is going to contain both of those, and we will call it footer container. And let's add those inside footer container. Now let's change this to flex. Let's change this to horizontal. And let's change the max width of this to 1,400 pixels. And let's make sure this is centered using this button here. This button here is just going to add auto and auto margin, which makes it centered. Um, work with me. Let's make the width of this 60% and 40% for this. And for height, let's give it around a pixel height of around 245. Same for the social box. Let's give this the background of this. And for the socials box, that is just gonna have a stroke of this ready pink. 
So we can go here. We can give it that and we can make sure that is that. And let's make it two. Now let's reuse some things that we already have. So let's take campaign text and we'll just duplicate that into there. We are going to change this to a relative because that is positioned absolute and we want to have it positioned absolute within our relative div, which is this here. And just so we don't forget, we'll also change that. Let's rename this campaign text. Let's duplicate this class and we'll call this box text. And what we can do here is we can select this, select this text here and we can click here. No, we can click here to make this a span and let's just call this off accent and let's change the color of that to this. And let's actually add a little bit of padding. We can leave it like that for now. Let's copy and paste that into there because on here we have follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Okay, let's delete that. We'll take this, paste that underneath. We will just delete all of that right now. Instagram. TikTok, YouTube, and we will make this span a separator. And that just does that quite quickly there. These aren't technically links, but we will fix that in a moment. Right, now let's add a little bit of margin to the side of this. Let's say 40 pixels. That's just gonna separate the boxes. And let's add a little bit of vertical height. Nope, sorry, not there. On the footer container, Let's add a bit of margin just to push this down a bit. Now that box technically is there, although we can't see it. So what we're gonna do, so we do see it, is we're gonna go back up to here and we're gonna grab this gradient and we are gonna paste this into the footer. Now what we have to do is we have to make sure that the footer is set to relative and there we go, that is now showing within that. But what we can also see now is that this isn't actually showing a background. And I think that's because we need to give it a Z index. So let's just give this a Z index of five. And now that is sitting in front. We want to add a box within this. So in here, and let's call this red, red box. Let's give this a background of this. And let's position this absolute. Now let's give it a width of 50%, and a height of 100%, and we want it to be positioned on the right. Now we want this work with me box to have overflow on hidden. Now this is gonna be important because what we're about to do here is we're about to increase the size We're about to skew this 20% and we're about to move it further over and position it just like that. Now, because if we took this off, you would see that this comes straight out. So if we have that on overflow hidden, then it just kind of acts as a mask, which is what we want. Now let's add in this image of me. So let's export this as a PNG. We'll drag in an image and we'll call it, we'll give this class profile image. We will make this absolute and we will give us Z index of five, 10. We will set this above and we will make sure that that sits like so on the bottom. 
Now, if we change both of these to 0%, that's going to trick it into going into the center. And there's that image of me. For these boxes, we might want to add a little bit more just so that sits behind quite nicely. Remember, this will be different on every screen size. So we will adjust it all accordingly as we go on. This part one is just to get the layout done. And then there'll be a part two, which we will go over all the animations and the responsiveness of this because we don't want this video to be too long. Right, the last thing, we have the bottom footer. So bottom footer, let's make the max width of this 100, 400, 1400 pixels. Let's do the centered. So this is actually technically the same as your footer container. Let's give this a bit of padding too of 10 viewport height we have our logo here we can actually reuse the logo that we have up here so let's take this and we can paste this into the bottom and let's actually rename this let's duplicate this and we'll call it footer logo and let's change the opacity of that to around 20%. Make sure that's in there. Because we have this gradient, it's making it impossible to select this text. So what we can actually do right now is we can just hide, sorry, we can just um, hide the gradient and it allows us to click on our text. So copyright 2022 footer left and we'll move both of these in make them flex make them make them sit beside each other position them like so and then we will add another one and then we've just got all rights reserved there we can keep that the same then so we have footer left and footer right now now because we have two elements contained within this if we make this a flex and have it positioned horizontally, have them positioned so, oh, that shouldn't have anything underneath it. There we go. Um, now we have them positioned like that, then all we actually need to do is have them positioned like that. And that's the magic of Flexbox. So let's turn our gradient back on up here. And there we go. Let's actually neaten a few things up and then we are done here. So it's probably going to be different when it comes to um, different screen sizes and things. So we want to do everything by percentages and just find the best happy medium that works with everything. Right. So there we have our basic layout and it looks like the last two things we actually have to add are these images. So let's just quickly do that. Aperture image, art icon. Let's quickly add these in. We'll add in an image into here. Call this aperture image. 90 by 90. Add a little bit of margin to it. make this 60 by 60 actually and set that to cover and set the padding of that to 60 and 60 we will take that and we will duplicate it over to our socials box replace that image with our heart icon and actually, I'm liking how that's looking better with that position there. Okay, so there we have it. We have the rough layout of everything. This video has gone on far too long and hopefully it was useful for those of you that might have followed along. Um, in part two of this video, we will be adding all the cool animations and um, the linking of this to sort of bring it to life and make it a working sort of website. So if you guys want to see that, Make sure you hit the like button on this. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you guys even want a part two 
of all the animations of this and how we're going to make it responsive because as you can see right now it is not working on mobile but we can fix that we will fix that all right subscribe peace bye